All right, cell membranes, cell walls, lysosomes, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Hmm, okay. Whoa, 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 what do you think you're doing? Um, studying biology. Biology, okay. Um, yeah? Biology? Seriously? Um, what's wrong with biology? What's wrong with biology? Oh, you gotta hear this guy. Are, are you okay? Hey bud, you like cellular respiration? You like cellular respiration? How about photosynthesis? You like that stuff too? <laughs> photosynthesis? What? Uh, who even is this guy? What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. As you might have been able to tell from that cold open, today's video is going to be about biology. Specifically biology as it relates to astronomy. Now before we get started, I just want to say that despite all our friction, or all my friction I guess, about biology, it's actually pretty cool stuff. Now with that said, let's get into this video. So how exactly does biology just show up in relation to astronomy? Well the answer is that it has everything to do with that question that we humans have always had. Is there life on other planets? This probably seems quite intuitive. Biology has to do with uh, living things and so does astrobiology. Except the life on other planets may not exactly be what you expect them to be like. They may not be those scary human-sized gooey aliens or they may not be those cute pet-sized friendly multiple-eyed looking aliens. The key to realize is that if there is life on other planets, it's surviving in extremely harsh conditions. Just think about how harsh the conditions are on some of the other planets. On Uranus, the temperature is so cold, ranging from negative 243 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit. On Venus, the atmosphere is so cold and full of gases that amounts we'd never want to breathe, and the temperatures can be so volatile ranging from negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And on Mars, where we can supposedly so easily survive, the radiation levels are more than 20 times what they are here on Earth. So with such harsh conditions, who is this life on other planets? I know those sci-fi novels and Hollywood movies weren't cheating on me. There has to be life. Well, there may be, but it may not be the kind of life you'd expect. Astrobiologists have discovered something called extremophiles, which are essentially teeny tiny microorganisms that can survive extremely harsh and volatile conditions. Scientists have discovered that some of these extremophiles are living in places like Antarctica, and they believe that their conditions might be analogous to those on other planets. These microbes can survive extreme temperatures, extreme radiation, extreme acidity, extreme concentrations of metals and gases, hence the name extremophiles. Scientists and astrobiologists could use these extremophiles to gain insights on life on other planets, and possibly even use them in traveling to other planets. So extremophiles could survive on other planets, but I mean, what do they do? Like, do they have any cool powers other than just surviving? Do they have alien technology? Do they have UFOs? Do they have the kind of stuff humans have? Do they have computers, satellites, cell phones, smartwatches, Bluetooth? Do they have toilets? Do they have toilet golf? Well, enter the Drake equation. The Drake equation is used to estimate the odds that there is life out there. You basically estimate the number of planets there are for sun-like stars, the fraction of those planets with life, the fraction of those planets with life where that life is intelligent, the fraction of those planets with life where that life is intelligent and where that intelligent life has communication and technology. You then multiply all of these numbers, which are mostly fractions, together to get your odds. Multiplying a ton of fractions together isn't going to give you the most favorable odds. 
So like if you're plugging in values to the Drake equation and you're multiplying one tenth by one tenth by one hundredth, you're gonna get something not so probabilistic. So at present, it seems that the chances are quite low based on what we know of there being lots of intelligent life out there. But the Drake equation just emphasizes how little we know. There's so much out there in a universe with other galaxies and exoplanets. Our solar system is just such a small part of that universe. It emphasizes the need for more scientists, more research, more biologists too, for more understanding. Alright folks, that's it for astrobiology today. If you enjoyed that video, go ahead and hit that like button. And also leave any comments down below. And there are many more videos coming soon, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me.